creating content is super time consuming, but it's not a, I should do it. It is actually a super successful marketing strategy. another Kelly Lindbergh podcast. I'm your host, business mentor, personal brand and style expert on a personal mission to inspire a minimum of five people a day. You've guessed it to do something different, show up as the best person that they aspire to be. And I love to hear it when you have been one of my five a day. So drop a review on Apple Podcasts or come and say hi on Instagram. I'd love to meet you and I'd love to know what changed for you. So today is a solo episode. It is answering one of the most common complaints or moans or just frustrations I hear when I'm mentoring someone or when I'm in a group masterclass for a personal brand audit. They always say social media is so time consuming and I hear you, but there is an easier way to make it work for you and to do it more time efficiently. And in this episode, I want to talk about content batching and how I've been organizing my content for, I'd say probably the last seven or eight years. So let's get started. So first of all, are you new to the terminology content batching? Let's start with what it is and and how that can make your life a little bit easier. So first of all, content batching is a strategy for you to create content that basically saves you time and helps you provide quality content for your customers, your clients, your followers, and it just helps with even more consistent and compelling posts. And I kind of compare it to sort of like an analogy, like making cookies or making soup. Soup is something I do actually, the making baking cakes and cookies these days. And I, I do this at the weekend to get ahead. And it's always like I've got something healthy in the fridge. And when you do something like this, there's chances that you gather all your ingredients, you preheat the oven or you prep the veggies, and then you start to place all your cookies out, not just one and cook it. And very much the same when it comes to soup. You don't just get one piece, you create four or five batches of it. So with content batching, you're really gathering your ingredients, which is your topic, visuals, copy, written content, combine them all and create content in related sets so that you're creating, you know, consistent pieces for your audience to enjoy. So I hope that explains a little bit more about what content batching is. Why should you batch your content? So it saves you time. So just like me making my soup and I get the whole week's worth or when you make uh, cookies in the oven for, what is it, 10, 15 minutes and then you get lots. It's saving time. If you don't batch your content, you will have to write one post at a time. Then you have to find the visual to go with it, add your brand colors if you're doing that and then schedule it or find time right now to post it. Then you have to repeat the process for each individual post. So The focus here is about how do we save the time so you can create more posts and you're just in that headspace. So here's some tips for you. First of all, analyze your posts. Find out what's working for you now. If you're on Instagram, click on the insights page, which is the one with finding out how many hearts you have or the engagement bubble, how many people have engaged with it or the arrow is how many people have forwarded it. And the tag is how many people have saved it. How many actions have actually been taken from the posts when you go back and have a little look at the impressions and the accounts reached? And I want you to consider these things. When was the content published? Was it at the most optimal time to publish? Was there a CTA in the caption? So CTA is call to action. And what format did you use? Was it a video? Was it a graphic? Lifestyle photo? Was it featuring you? Was it featuring your family? Was it featuring your product? What was included? And this is going to give you a really good idea to see what your audience actually likes. I know my audience, for example, still really love style related content. Even though it's really important for me and about my business as a personal brand expert to share about business, They don't always tend to be the best performing posts. 
my two best performing posts are posts that are kind of milestones. So, you know, hey, I was 17 years in Dubai or it's my business birthday anniversary. Um, those always tend to be high performing posts. And so do, do style related posts. So if I'm doing a video, like one of the more um, recent ones that got great engagement was about how to hide your tummy. And, and it was a reel and that got a lot of um, a lot of traction. So find out what content, what content which is real, find out which ones it is and ones that include you tend to be better performing. So the next step is really to identify your content pillars. So content pillars are anything between four and seven or eight topics that you'll consistently discuss and create content for on social media. So write down pillars that reflect your brand along with identifying themes that your audience is interested in. So not just things that that you like. Mine are, to give you an example, style, personal branding, inspirational quotes, relationships, fitness, friendships, things that don't do particularly well is if I was to just do a food post. I've tried them maybe a few years ago and, and they're, they're just not great posts. Scenic posts also don't tend to be great for me either. They can be part of a carousel post, but just not the first image. Now, these content uh, pillars really help me when it comes to creating content for my social media and, and when I'm doing my, my content creation, when it comes to getting my pictures taken. So there's another episode about personal branded photo shoot and getting ideas together for that. But think about your content pillars as a guide to help you avoid like last minute posts. Oh, I don't know what to post. Or, you know, I think, you know, when I'm styling something and I've taken a picture of it, I do think then, what could I say that's related to my content pillar about this? So next up, number three is brainstorm new content ideas. So consider things like what time of year is it? Is there any holidays? Is there launches coming up? Any campaigns to ensure that your content is relevant each week? So the last time I created content, I was already thinking about a birthday promo I wanted to put in. The next content creation I'm going to be doing will be what can I do maybe around Black Friday or even as much ahead as sort of Christmas posts. So if you're listening to this, this is in October time. Think about what are your most frequently asked questions from your community? Is there anything that's maybe like timely news or announcements related to your niche? And then just start brain dumping any other ideas or trends or anything that you can kind of repurpose that will work well for your content ideas. Next up is photo source and creation. So what do I mean by that? Well, for me, I batch content with regards to photo sources and creation because I take all my own content. I don't take content from elsewhere. I used to years and years and years ago, but now it's all my own content because it's my own brand. So I know what works and what doesn't. So Thursdays, I personally don't take any meetings. They're my creative days. That's when I'll either book a photographer and create content or some weeks it might be I'll do a batch of reels. Some weeks it can be bold. It can also be that particular day I might just want to read and research things and just be creative, write some of the the words of my next book that's coming up. And remember, if it's not scheduled in, it doesn't get done. So it's really important, like the creative day for me is scheduled in automatically every Thursday. So even when a client might say to me, can you do Thursday? I know that my creative day is already booked in. I plan my looks thinking about captions, what is current in my business, what do I want to share, how can I educate and add value. I always make sure that my content includes one or more of the following success strategies. So posts should include something that is either educational, inspiring, behind the scenes, like people always love to know, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, or maybe community driven. So think about those four um, success strategies when it comes to the types of of content delivery. I definitely think it's worth seeing how you can budget for a photographer on a consistent basis. 
If you can, then still make sure that you set aside one day to set up your phone, have all your looks ready, your ideas prepped and batch your content. Once I have all my content ready, it's neatly stored in my Dropbox. I have a folder for Kelly images and within that folder, I have one for press, which is all my studio based images, which is great for articles and sort of press releases. And then I have a social media folder within Kelly Images and in each folder it's by month and I've been doing this since back to, I think I just checked it out, back to 2015. I've got looks curated from then. And then I use Preview in particular for Instagram on a weekly basis and I plan on a Sunday, social media Sunday morning, to plan my content for the week and this is also where I'll spend the time on a monthly basis and planned LinkedIn content. So I have a similar strategy for LinkedIn and the content that I'm posting there. Next up, you wanna think about your captions and this is the one that can often be the hardest. If you can plan for a month, um, because you're just in that head space where you're like, right, okay, I've got it. I can can think about the things. And just remember, you can always change it slightly if you're posting real time, but I prefer to plan mine more real time, but I will plan on a Sunday all my posts out so they're all stored on my phone. They're easy to reach to and all the captions are written. So they could change slightly, but they are all written out on preview. And this is the first kind of hour of my day on a Sunday. So it's done. And I talk about Instagram maybe more because it is my primary platform, LinkedIn being my secondary platform. So you've got to think as well, which are your primary platforms and how often are you going to be posting? As I mentioned, LinkedIn, I plan for monthly. I use the same content pillar strategy. There are less posts on that platform on an average two, maybe three a week. The start of the week might be a quote or something kind of maybe post weekend, making it a little bit personal. I do share um, a workwear Wednesday look and then a Thursday could be a podcast promotion or maybe any articles that I've been in or written a column about. Then I can share that as and when as well. For those of you that are part of the Brand You online course or have um, mentoring with me, I've got over 300 caption templates that I've used and created over the years. So drop me a message if you haven't found that in your online course and I can tell you where it is. My mentees also follow something called the HIC formula for posting content with a profitable strategy. Now you know the type of content that you've got planned, you know you've got your pillars, start writing the caption. So this formula has really helped with those that I mentor and myself create engaging social media posts. So H-I-C for for the, the purpose of an acronym, H stands for hook. This is the first line in your caption that will draw your audience in and maybe stop their scroll. That's what we'd like. And using, uh, use words that will compel them to read more, like kind of like a headline, if you like. I is for information. So this is where you can go into a little bit more detail if it's about your product or what the actual post is about. And then C is your call to action. So boost your post engagement by inviting your audience to take action. Now, you could ask them to comment their thoughts, save the post for later, click on your bio, send you a DM, leave you a heart. Like it could be any of those things as well. A couple of other tips in this caption writing is you know, use line breaks. So avoid cluttered captions by using line breaks or returns. It will help make longer captions easier to read and skim. And I always say, you know, use emojis. um, And it does depend on your brand voice, but emojis can add personality. It can add color. It can add a little bit of emotion to your caption and really just makes it a little bit more interesting and not just words to read. There's the there's the emotion there. So next up, don't forget about filming video content. It's really important to look at how you can incorporate this into your social media content when you're batching. And so many media platforms now are pushing content like Reels or TikTok. And it's a great way to sort of switch up your visuals and connect with your audience and just show something from 
a reel side. The same with a photo shoot. If you're filming videos or reels for your brand, set aside a portion of your time to not only batch the recording and the footage, but also to write what it is that you're going to say and script out your videos because this is going to help when editing and, and, you know, bringing everything together that you actually know what's going to be said. Another useful tip is to look at what music is trending on Reels and this will also boost your chance of your page maybe being seen on the Explore page. All right, what other tips have we got here? So what about designing your graphics when it comes to content batching and doing this all on one particular day or over two particular days? So graphics can include quotes to maybe break up your pictures. It could be video covers for um, reels or IGTV. It could be carousel infographics. It could be Instagram story slides, which are always really useful. So when it comes to content batching, Design templates for maybe your most commonly used graphics. It just makes the process a little bit quicker. Store them in a folder so you can refer back to them. Canva is honestly a great tool for this. And if design is not your skill set, then reach out to our digital team who can create a batch of templates for you each month and then you can store them and just keep reusing them. So, tip number eight schedule your content calendar. So, Once you finish brainstorming, first step, what was working well for you, what wasn't, then think about writing your captions or even sourcing um, pictures, creating your photos if you're doing your photos yourself. When I say sourcing photos, this might be images if you're utilizing other people's or maybe you're using things like stock photography. I always think your audience know when you're using stock photography, but it might work with your theme. So use your content calendar. That's going to help you organize everything together. I preload my content for Facebook and LinkedIn. I mentioned using Hootsuite. IG I post in real time, but I utilize the app preview to just sort of see what it looks like. Now, a little tip, reels. If any of you are doing reels, they don't show on the preview app. So what I do is if I'm going to plan to put in reels in that week, I will take a screenshot of the reel and add that in so I can actually see what the post looks like. You could also use a social media tool like Later. I know that's really popular for Instagram and you'll be able to see all your content in one place there. And you can choose whether you want to see it weekly or or monthly, whatever is easiest. Sure, creating content is super time consuming, but it's not a, I should do it, It is actually a super successful marketing strategy. And I always think about when you're thinking about creating content, just reframe it. And instead of saying, I have to, I have to put time aside to create content for my social media, just think about it the other way. I'm so lucky or I'm so fortunate or I'm so grateful that I get to create content for my audience who are my customers, who are my clients who are buying my product and service. So here's the thing, not everyone is ready to buy your product or service right now. But remember, the dirhams are in the DMs and this is where you can create relationships, engage and keep showing up. Even if some of your posts only get five likes, 10 likes, whatever it is, imagine you had a shop and 10 people walked into that shop as soon as you opened the door to look around you'd engage with them and you'd be so happy. So bear all these tips in mind. Let me know if you've got any more questions about batching content. Drop me a message on Instagram and I'll see how we can help you. It might even be that we can do a part two on on content, uh, creating content for your social media. And if you're looking for some help with your business and your personal brand and boosting your impact and digital footprint, then book in for a call with me. Apply on Instagram in the bio section. There's a direct link for you to book a time with me. If you've enjoyed this content and found it super useful, then share it with a friend and leave a review or tag it on my story so other people can learn from it as well. Happy batching and until next time. Bye bye.
Thank you so much for being here and listening to this episode today. Were you inspired? What was your one takeaway that you can put into action? Head over to Instagram, Kelly Bloomberg Official. I love to hang out there. So drop me a DM, tell me the best part, or even better, share it with a friend and inspire them too. We are growing weekly and it's all down to you. Thank you so much. Reviewer of the week left this message. Annie, highly recommended listen. Great podcast. Personally, I really resonated with the last one on how to make the best of your relationships personally and professionally. Please leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. It really does make a massive difference. Be inspired and keep following your dreams.